Hello, I'm John Ullman, and this is Flash CS4 Essentials. In this series, we're going to look at this new version of Flash from the ground up by building a website from start to finish. Now, I've been an interactive developer since 1991 with my own company, On The Wave, and I've been using and training Flash since its very first version. But this version has me particularly excited because for the first time, we have a brand new way to work with animations in the timeline. Now, before we get to that, Let's get things started by just getting comfortable with the Flash interface itself. Let's take a look at the workspaces, the drawing tools, and most importantly, let's get a start on our Flash website. Now to get things started, we're going to want a brand new Flash file to work with. So if you're looking at the Splash screen, you can choose Flash File Action Script 3. And if you don't see the Splash screen, you can just go up to the File menu and choose New File and make the same choices. Now since we're going to be building this website through all the chapters, I actually recommend that you do the chapters in order. And we're going to save our file out into a folder that I've already prepared for you. So let's go up to our file menu. We'll choose Save. And if you can navigate to your desktop, you should find our project files for the Flash CS4 Essential series here. Inside that, there's an empty folder called Flash Website. And for each one of the chapters, I'm going to save our file right into this folder. Let's just call it Flash Site. Now, if you want to do a chapter out of order, that's fine. Each one of the chapters has a start file that you can start from instead of working with your own file. Our Flash workspace is divided up into a number of different zones, but the most important one that we want to pay attention to first is our stage, which is this big area right here in the middle. The rest of these areas we can lump together and call them all panels, and they actually all work very similarly. Each one of the panels is collapsible just by clicking in the gray space next to the tab name. You can see that the properties window here collapse down to make more room for the tools, and likewise the tools panel. Now that goes for our timeline at the top, and our panels on the right hand side as well. In addition, each one of these panels is completely movable. If you just grab it by the tab, you can drag it and place it any place on the screen that you want. Now it helps to keep these panels organized, and to get you started, they've actually got a few different work sets of these panels already created. You can find them at the bottom of the Windows menu, and this is the menu you would use to actually find all the additional panels that we have to work with. If we look down here at the bottom under Workspace, you can see that they've got a number of different sets already developed. And just to make it easy, we can access all of these sets right up here at the top panel as well. Now if I click through a few of these, we can take a look at the Essentials panel. This is pretty much the bare minimum. There's one for Developers. And that one brings up panels like Compile Errors and Output. There's even one that looks like the old Flash 8 and CS3 interface. But I'm going to start with the one called Designer. Now since I made a few changes to it, I can reset a panel back to its original state by just using the Reset button in the same pull-down menu. Now I know we're going to be needing some different tools in this, so what I'd like to do is save our own workspace by going to the Window pull-down menu, and down under Workspace here, we can create a new workspace. Let me just give it a name of Website Design. We'll click OK, and you can see Website Design is chosen as our layout. Now I know we're also going to be using a few other panels as we work through the rest of the exercises, so let me just pull a few of them up right now. I'm going to go under Window, and the first one I'm going to grab is one called Motion Presets. This is a brand new panel. We're going to be using it in a later chapter, but for right now, I want to take this panel and add it to my set of panels over here on the side. You can see it's going to dock when the blue line appears, and I'll just drop it into place. Now we're going to need a few more panels to complete our website by the end of these chapters, so let's just go over to Windows, and we'll select a couple more. I'm going to select the Actions panel. And I'm going to go back in and also select the Behaviors panel. Now, we'll grab Actions, and we'll add it to the bottom of our stack here. I'll go ahead and collapse Motion Presets for now. And I'm going to pull in Behaviors in the tab next to Actions, since those two tools are kind of grouped together. Let's collapse that panel. And we'll go back to Windows, and I'll grab the Components and the Component Inspector panels. And we'll make a little grouping out of those two. Just drag my components over and dock it, and grab the component inspector and dock it right next to it. 
Now I also like to manage my screen space a little bit, so I'm going to collapse this panel down to icons. Now that takes up a little less space, but once you get used to what these icons actually mean, you can drag this panel over and resize it so that all you can see is the icons, and then you get a much larger screen space that you can work with. Now for our lessons, I'm going to pull this out so we can at least see the names of these panels, just so nobody gets lost. And to make sure all my settings get saved, I'm going to go back up to my Windows menu. We'll go to Workspace. I'll choose New Workspace and give it the same name, and we'll override our original workspace so that this one's going to be saved instead. We'll just click Yes to overwrite the original one, and now whenever we choose Reset, we'll go back to this Website Design Workspace.